contribution. Brahma, the supreme. Hadi, butter. Brahma, spiritual. Agnao, in the fire of consummation. Brahmana, by the spirit soul. Putam, offered. Brahma, spiritual kingdom. Eva, certainly. Pena, by him. Gantavyam, to be reached. Brahma, spiritual. Karma, activity. Samadhina, by complete absorption. Translation. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activity, in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Purpose. How activities in Krishna consciousness can lead one ultimately to the spiritual goal is described here. There are various activities in Krishna consciousness, and all of them will be described in the following verses. But for the present, just as just the principle of Krishna consciousness is described. A, Krishna, a conditioned soul entangled in material contamination is sure to act in the material atmosphere, and yet he has to be, yet he has to get out of such an environment. The process by which the conditioned soul <clears throat> can get out of the material atmosphere is Krishna consciousness. For example, a patient who is suffering from a disorder of the bowels due to overindulgence in milk products is cured by another milk product, namely curd. The materially absorbed conditioned soul can be cured by Krishna consciousness as set forth here in the Gita. This process is generally known as jagya or activities, sacrifices simply meant for the satisfaction of Vishnu or Krishna. The more the activities of the material world are performed in Krishna consciousness or for Vishnu only, the more the atmosphere becomes spiritualized by complete absorption. Brahman means spiritual. The Lord is spiritual and the rays of his transcendental body are called Brahma Jyoti, his spiritual effulgence. <clears throat> Everything that exists is situated in that Brahma Jyoti, but when that Jyoti is covered by illusion, maya, or sense gratification, it is called material. The material veil can be removed at once by Krishna consciousness. Thus, the offering for the sake of Krishna consciousness, the consuming agent of such an offering or contribution, the process of consumption, the contributor, and the result are all combined together, Brahman, or the Absolute Truth. The Absolute Truth covered by Maya is called matter. Matter dovetails to the cause of the Absolute Truth regains its spiritual quality. Krishna consciousness is the process of converting the illusory consciousness into Brahman, or the Supreme. When the mind is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, it is said to be in Samadhi, or trance. Anything done in such transcendental consciousness is called Jagya, or sacrifice to the Absolute. In that condition of spiritual consciousness, the contributor, the contribution, the consumption, the performer or leader of the performance, and the result or ultimate gain, everything becomes one in the absolute, the supreme Brahman. That is the method of Krishna consciousness. Brahmarpanam Brahma Havir Brahma Agnao Brahmana Hutam Brahmaeva Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activity in which the consummation is absolute, and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. So this verse uh, gives a very specific principle, uh, which is generally applicable everywhere in devotional service, by giving a very specific example. Brahma Arpanam Brahma Havi Brahma Agnao The persons when they perform sacrifices, they uh, take butter or ghee and they offer it on the fire. And the fire uh, absorbs the butter, consumes it. Therefore, Prabhupada uses the word here, the fire of consummation. Consummation also means that which is consumed. Uh. So, in the this fire, Agni is the representation of Vishnu, so when we make this fire sacrifice, the fire is actually Vishnu, and we worship that fire as Vishnu, because when we offer grains and ghee, actually we're feeding the fire, because fire is like grains and ghee, and when it is consumed, that is actually Vishnu who is consuming it, he is eating 
through the fire, his tongue is actually the fire. The fire is the tongue of Vishnu. And he is eating the grain and ghee through the fire. So obviously the fire is done. Now, that which is consumed must also be Brahma, because as soon as Vishnu consumes it, it immediately attains the spiritual atmosphere. So it is also Brahma. Um, and the person who offers it, because he is offering food which is consumed by Vishnu, he is performing very nice personal service to Vishnu, so he also becomes Brahma. But anyway he was Brahma, because uh, he must be a Brahmana in order to offer to the Supreme Lord. You cannot offer food to Krishna unless you are Brahmana. Uh, anybody may try, but actually only the Brahmana can offer food. Now, if one is a Vaishnava, certainly he can offer. A Vaishnava means the body of Vishnu. He's even superior to a Brahmana. So therefore, he may offer to uh, Vishnu um, anything, and Vishnu will accept. Vishnu will only accept that which comes from a devotee of the Lord. If a non-devotee is a Brahman, he will not accept, Vishnu will not accept the food, even though he's a Brahman, if he's a non-devotee. So therefore, when we're speaking here, we're speaking about those who are doing activities in Krishna consciousness, so obviously that Brahman, that spirit soul who's offering the food must obviously have devotion to the Lord. So he, because of his wanting to perform sacrifice to the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of God, it is also Brahman. So therefore, the offerer, that which he offers, and the fire which is consuming the offering, are all Brahman. They are all spirit, spiritual. Brahma refers to that spiritual atmosphere, that supreme atmosphere. So all of this has merged into the Brahman. Ah. So therefore, this verse is very nice. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Brahma karma samadhina. He who is performing activities of the Supreme in full absorption. Samadhi actually means full absorption. Sometimes people think Samadhi means just bliss. But no, Samadhi is a very specific technical term, which is referring, of course Samadhi is, the word Samadhi uh, can be used in so many ways, but when we speak of Samadhi we generally mean the Ashtanga process, where the last four stages is Kachahad, Dharanajana, Samadhi. Samadhi is the um, full absorption in meditation on the worshipable object. Prabhupada defines Samadhi that way. And that is a very excellent definition of Samadhi. How one can be fully absorbed in, that does not mean merged into, but it means absorbed in. The consciousness is absorbed in the worshipable object fully absorbed in meditation on the worshipable object. So just like one can be absorbed in the lotus feet of the Lord, that does not mean one merges into the lotus feet of the Lord. It means one's consciousness is fully absorbed in meditation on the lotus feet of the Lord. That's called samadhi. When there is no other thought, then the absorption into the, um, of the meditation on the worshipable object. That is called samadhi, definition. So, uh, Brahma Karma means the activities performed in Brahma are fully absorbed in Brahma. That is actually Krishna consciousness. When one is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, he is sure to attain Brahma e Brahmeva Tena Gantavyam. He is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of this complete absorption in the most worshipable object. So therefore, uh, the whole process becomes transcendental. The whole thing. That means whatever one does in Krishna's service, it becomes transcendentalized, his activity becomes transcendentalized, the object he utilizes becomes transcendentalized. Somebody may complain, well that doesn't refer to chairs or or tables, or microphones, or wires, or pieces of brass, or whatever, but no. When one uses these things, they become transcendentalized in the Supreme. Therefore, you cannot just deal with these things as you like. You are talking about the paraphernalia of the Lord. Yes, the, just like in Bengal, coal cartel, they call it. It's a coal. Excuse me, the coal is a, what they call it in Bengal, coal cartel. So, they 
They say, call Kartal PJ. At the end of the, uh, at the Premadwani, at the end when we sing, we say, Dayan Vishnu Padi Kinesh. So, they, they, they say, call Kartal PJ. This is not just some fanaticism, but these instruments are factually transcendental. They are the paraphernalia of Lord Chaitanya. Therefore, if you were to put some cartels laying on the floor or to touch a madunga with your foot, you would immediately be chastised like an angel. Because it is devotional paraphernalia. Therefore, it is of the superior nature. All of these things, especially that which is in the temple of Krishna, devotional paraphernalia. We're not talking, of course, like the bar of soap you have in your moochie kit. We're talking about the devotional paraphernalia in the temple and that which is utilized in Krishna's service. That which is offered to the Supreme in meditation on the Supreme, that becomes of the Supreme Nature. That becomes of Brahma. And everything else which is not utilized in the Supreme, that is of the nature of Maya or illusion. So Krishna conscious devotee does not mind using anything in devotional service because he knows as soon as he utilizes things in devotional service, then these things become transcendentalized and they become spiritual. Therefore, Rupa Goswami said, Anasakta Sivichayan Yitharta Mukhani Sitaha Nibandha Krishna Sambandha Yuktam Varagya Uchita. Everything can be accepted in Krishna's service, but without attachment. Anasakta That means without attachment. Anasaktasya vishayan. Vishayan means all the objects which one might ordinarily consider as sense objects. Certainly a musical instrument is in one sense a sense object. It gives one pleasure when you play on it, it gives one pleasure to hear it. So in one sense, it is a sense object. I mean, definitely it is a sense object. But Rupa Goswami says when that object is utilized in Krishna's service without attachment, that is proper for a devotee. Of course, Madanga is another case. But, uh, let us say, uh, bass guitar is definitely not devotional paraphernalia. You do not find these things in temples uh, anywhere. But one can accept if it is used in Krishna's service nicely. Uh, or a big bus. You do not find big buses generally in the temple. Big stinky buses. You don't find these things. But because it is carrying Krishna's devotees out to distribute Krishna's book, it is transcendental. Yes. So no policeman should give it a ticket. It's an offense. <laughs> Don't tell them that if they do. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, the bus may be accepted by a devotee, although devotees generally do not accept bus. I mean, previously, they would not accept such a mode of transport. Of course, there wasn't such a mode of transportation. People... They would think the devotee, he is supposed to just walk around in his bare feet and just go from here to there and chant some mantras and, uh, and bless some children and make a fire sacrifice, like this. But no! Anasaktasya Vishayan. A bus is definitely a sense of it. People are using it all the time for doing all kinds of sense gratification. But we are using it in Krishna's service. Therefore, Yathatam Upayanjitaha. We are taking the value for Krishna. We are using the value of this thing to satisfy Krishna. Therefore, it is transcendental. Nirbandha Krishna Sambandha Yukta Varagi Ujjate Because we connect it to Krishna, it is completely transcendental. That is called Yukta Varagi. Practical renunciation. Yukta Varagi as opposed to Sago Varagi, which means fruitless or um, renunciation that bears no, no good result for Krishna. Yukta Varagi means practical renunciation. It is practical renunciation to take a big bus and fill it with books and then empty all the books by the end of the week and come back and fill it up again. That is called practical renunciation. Sabu Varagi or impractical realization or renunciation which doesn't have the uh, attachment or connection with the Supreme is not absorbed in Brahma is that which sees something as a material sense object and rejects it. You know, you can just imagine how frustrating or fruitless that would be. Because there's nothing that isn't what you might consider a sense object. Can anyone see anything that isn't a sense object? 
No, because everything is a sense object. Otherwise, how can you see it? You can't see things which aren't sense objects. <laughs> you can't see. If it has no form, if it is not an object of my sense, the eye, then it doesn't exist. I can't see it. But if it doesn't exist in some form, I can't see it. Therefore, in one sense, this Falgu Bhairagya is simply some kind of mental speculation. Because everything has form or taste or aroma or touch or whatever sound to it. Everything is there in all the things of the material nature. So what is, what is one going to do? Make himself deaf and dumb and blind and become a little vegetable holding in some corner somewhere so he can avoid using material objects? It's a hopeless thing. Hopeless thing. And somebody might label. He might label certain things as spiritual and certain things as non-spiritual out of his own mental speculation. He may say, yes, uh, uh, yes, the deity is spiritual and the altar of the deity is spiritual and at the line where the deity's altar stops from that point on it's all material. By mental speculation he may delineate what is material, what is spiritual, but that does not make it spiritual or material. And thus he will reject all of these um, uh, uh, things. <laughs> we want of the better word. <laughs> thing is one of those words and you don't know what you're going to say, you just say thing. <laughs> He will reject all of these things simply because he sees no connection. He sees how it is not directly connected to Krishna. And thus, what happens? His renunciation is incomplete. And it is not actually going to bring about the result of satisfying Krishna and doing things for Krishna. Just like when Prabhupada came to the West, he did things which in a million years the normal devotees even wouldn't even consider doing. Says first of all, crossing the ocean. There's some superstition that a Hindu should not cross the ocean. Some superstition. Therefore, from that point of view, it was no good to cross the ocean. Another point of view, they said, uh, you will be forced to do things like they do them in the West, and therefore that will not be very good for devotional life, and therefore you should not go. And then Prabhupada went, he even went to the Avalon Ballroom in San Francisco, and had a kirtan in the middle of a huge rock concert. <laughs> this is called yukta varagya, real renunciation. And if one simply sees, oh, that is simply sense gratification, let me skip the whole thing. This is babu varagya. Nobody becomes a devotee then. What Prabhupada had to do to make people devotees. Yeah, this is real renunciation. To go in the middle of the most hellish spot in the history of mankind, uh, the Bow of course, you know, the Bowery in 1966 is a heavenly planet compared to some places in the world today. <laughs> I mean, nowadays people have debated so much, but at that time the reigning hellish place on the world was the Lower East Side of New York City, and he went there, sat down, lived there, dealt with fools and rascals, uh, nonsenses. <laughs> of course, they all became Brahman. They became of that quality by, by coming in contact with this Brahman, or spiritual quality of Srila Prabhupada. We're using the word Brahman because that is what the verse is talking about. But Prabhupada is transcendental. Therefore, anyone who came in contact with him came, became of the same nature, transcendental. Transcendental life. Ah. So, how? That is real renunciation. The real renunciation of that activity of preaching. Utilizing all kinds of things. Using a bongo drum to play madango on a kitchen pot to play madango on. A recording studio to make a record of that wonderful happening of All these things, is pure renunciation. Going anywhere, just to find somebody who's going to be Krishna conscious. Doing anything for preaching. Distributing his books, doing all kinds of activity. Printing the book, just like in the beginning of Prabhupada's original Bhagavatam. There's a preface there, where Prabhupada says, You may be confused because you may have seen this sadhu, suitcase in hand, going here and there in the streets of Delhi to, uh, uh, how did he use the word, loitering in the paper market and coming uh, to the printer and doing so many things and selling the Back to Godhead magazine and the tea houses and you may think this is very strange. What kind of sadhu is this? It seems to be business. But no, because it is literature about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and it is meant for going home back to Godhead and saving the conditioned soul, this activity is all transcendental. And therefore, 
No one can criticize. Oh, what is the sadhu doing in the paper market? So no one can criticize. Because simply doing it to save all the people of the world. And this we have seen and we have learned also. Things which normal brahmanas would never do. They wouldn't even consider. Uh, giving a class here with a videotape going and the tape recorder this and that, or even putting it on the radio, they, it's just completely beyond them. They have the faintest idea, these things. It's just, it's in, inconceivable. But a real devotee knows how to utilize everything in Krishna's service. And that is very difficult. Prabhupada says in Yubu Dashamita, unless one is a very advanced devotee, he can't understand how to use everything in Krishna's service. He cannot understand, because uh, it is not possible for one who is less advanced to see everything in relationship to Krishna. But one who is an actually advanced devotee can use everything in Krishna's service. Remember the other day I said, except Maya. Maya you don't use in Krishna's service. No, thank you, then we're here, no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just want to make that point clear. <laughs> Does anybody get some big ideas? So, uh, this is the process of Krishna consciousness. Everything being utilized for Krishna Everything being of the nature of Brahma means it's all the fulgence of Krishna. This Brahma, this everything which we call Brahma is actually emanating from Krishna. So this material world is also emanating from Krishna. Therefore it is said, Sarvam Kaldidam Brahma. Everything is Brahma. The only difference between the Brahma which is of the material nature is the consciousness of the utilizer of that Brahma. If the utilizer is thinking in a separate way from the Supreme Lord, independent from Krishna, then these material ingredients, they are taking up the material atmosphere as separate from Krishna. And when one takes these material ingredients and again connects them to Krishna, then they become spiritualized. After all, these cartels are just a combination of brass and nickel. Something like 95% brass and 5% nickel. That's what a cartel is. It's made in a foundry, a normal thing that's a bunch of bricks, probably filthy dirty with the carbon and soot. And um, uh, they put coal in it and they pump it up with bellows and make it real hot and melt it in a pot and then pour it in a form. The cartel is very difficult to make. You know, you have to make them in many layers. You can't just pour them in one thing. And it's not that a cartel is poured in one thing. It's made in many different, very skinny layers, very thin layers, and finally covered over at the end. You didn't know that, did you? But anyway, this is our material process. And these are material elements. And everything is very, very typical. But at the end, all of a sudden we say, now it is spiritual, don't touch it with your feet. And how is this? Because it is of the nature of Brahman naturally. But it is separated from Krishna by consciousness, therefore we cannot understand that nature of Brahman. But when it is in cartel form and you take it in chant Hare Krishna, then immediately it becomes transcendentalized. Therefore, it, because it becomes the paraphernalia of the Lord, it gains its transcendental quality. And that is not just a mental speculation. That is the Shastric fact. Anything in relationship to Krishna used in the paraphernalia, used as paraphernalia for the service of the Lord becomes of the nature of the Lord. The paraphernalia of the Supreme Lord is also spiritual. The name of Krishna, the form of Krishna, the associates of Krishna, the uh, pastimes of Krishna, the paraphernalia of Krishna, all are spiritual. So, the devotee's business is to make everything the paraphernalia of Krishna. <laughs> Therefore, he's always bringing in more and more things, uh, trying to bring in more and more people to make them associates, bring in more and more things to make them paraphernalia. Somehow or another, just connect everything to the Supreme Lord. Either make it his paraphernalia or make it the devotees for him, connect them to Krishna. All of this is absorbed in the Brahman, in the Absolute. And it is of the Absolute nature, and it is definitely, decidedly transcendent. Now somebody may say he can't see that, therefore he does not believe it. But the same person will also look at the deity and see marvel. He who can see such things can see how these paraphernalia are of the transcendental nature. He who cannot see such things cannot see it at all, even if it is that way. One who cannot see transcendental things can never see the transcendental nature of these things. Therefore it is not the defect of the thing, it is the defect of the eye. The eyes cannot see. Therefore, uh, what is the use? How is it possible for a vision like that to occur? It's not possible. So, one has to develop the eye. Developing the eye is not easy. No, it is not easy. 
to develop the transcendental eye is not easy. But, Seven Mukhehi Jivados Vayamevas Pratyaka. If one chants Hare Krishna Mantra, if one utilizes his tongue, it all begins with the tongue, believe it or not. The whole process begins with the tongue. If starting with the tongue, he utilizes his body, mind, words, devotional service, then he will be able to understand the absolute. Starting with the tongue, what does that mean? Well, the tongue has two functions, to eat and to vibrate. So if one eats Krishna Prasad, if one vibrates, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, then the eye will become automatically transcendental eye. The senses will become transcendental eye, and one will be able to see Brahma, factors in all of his activities, in all of the devotees, in all of the paraphernalia, certainly in all of the books, and he will even see the supreme holy name, Hare Krishna Mantra, in its real light. Namas Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Pona Sudha Nusha Mukkala Vinuta Nama Nama. That is very uh, important verse to explain the glories of the Lord. Nama Chintamani. The name is like Chintamani. Chintamani means it is like a touchstone. All of the desires of the living entity are fulfilled when he chants the holy name of the Lord. We do not mean, of course, that you can become a big rich man or become a big famous person or become kind of powerful. No, we don't mean like that. We mean the innermost transcendental desires of the living entity become realized. That is to come in contact with Krishna. Krishna Chaitanya Rasa, the form of the relationship with the Supreme Lord, which is the life of the devotee, the factual life of the devotee becomes real. Because the holy name is like a touchstone which can turn one into a devotee of the Lord. It is complete, Purna means perfect and complete. Shuddha means absolutely pure. Nitya Mukta means eternally liberated. Anabina Tam Nama Namino means it's not different from the possessor of the name. The name and the possessor of the name are not different. So, when one chants Hare Krishna Mantra or engages in spiritual activities of preaching that are of the transcendental nature, uh, or, or cooking, or sweeping the floor, or digging a uh, potato, or whatever he does, when he does it for Krishna, it all becomes of the spiritual nature, and he will gradually develop understanding on the transcendental platform what is to be done, what service is to be done uh, for the satisfaction of Krishna directly. Then one can elevate himself to the spiritual world and perform personal service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly. Direct service to the Supreme Lord. Uh, that is very nice. That, of course, that platform is very highly elevated and is not attainable quickly. Of course, if one is already advanced from previous lifetimes uh, acquirement, he may be able to do but I do not think we are dealing in general with such persons. We all have to struggle our way to the platform of being Krishna's associates. In the meantime, we have to start off by being the servant of the spiritual master, huh. and thus the servant of Srila Prabhupada, or servant of Srila Prabhupada directly, servant thus of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, and Srila Gorka Shurdas Prabhupada, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Jagannath Das Prabhupada, all the way back to Lord Chaitanya. Dasa Das Anu Das. I am the servant of the servant of the servant of the Gopi. I am not the servant of Krishna directly. Krishna in Padma Purana says, anyone who says he's my servant directly, he is not my servant. But he who says he's the servant of my servant, he is my real servant. So, one who uh, is the servant of the disciplic succession, following the principles of the disciplic succession, connected with the disciplic succession, in service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is actually the servant of the Lord. And if we can just connect ourselves in that way, serve Krishna very nicely every day, perform our activities with great enthusiasm, and spread this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world, then we will definitely be connected with this government, which is the perfection. Are there any questions? Yes. Did I talk too fast? I just realized I was talking awful fast. I talked too fast, didn't I? Who, said, who thinks I talked too fast? Don't be bad. Everybody understood? What do you mean? You. Yes, Carson. Yes. I quoted the first half last night, so I figured I'd quote the second half this night. Mm. I would be amazed because it says he jiva dao. Jiva dao means by the tongue. Jiva. J-I-H-V-A. 
Jiva means the tongue. Seva Mukhe means the it means the face of devotion. It means the face of server servitorship, literally. But actually that means the characteristic of devotional service begins from the tongue. Men Svayam Eva Svaratyadaha, it will manifest itself automatically. I mean, I'm sure that's there. Maybe one place it's translated a little differently, but you can find it that way. Yes, that's what it says. But that happens when the service beginning with tongue. Maybe that's left out, that there's not very important thing. Other? Yes, sir. And you know? You know where it came from? It's in the Chaitanya Saritan. He will tell you where. I knew the verse before the Chaitanya Saritan that came out from the coding, so I learned it off the tape. So I don't I couldn't tell you where I got it from. When one is dancing very wildly. Yeah, I think I was the one who explained it. In Sri Vasangam, right? Yeah, right. So what's the point? Because I was talking about in, in Germany sometimes they have such wild kirtans, you can't believe it. And even they pick up some devotee, they throw him against the wall. <laughs> they used to do this. They used to go completely nuts. Completely, totally. I, I mean, I had to stop it. <laughs> when Prabhupada was in England, and and the last time in September of '77, we all dropped everything and drove like madmen to England just to see Prabhupada. And, and then when the German the German devotees and the Swedish I mean, uh, what am I saying? German devotees and the English devotees got together and had one kirtan, it was so wild, it was beyond belief. And, and I had to personally come downstairs and stop it because they were destroying the room. They were <laughs> so that's what I was talking about. One should not have this wild kirtan. You were there on the visit? Not that kirtan? <laughs> so insane. Pitcher Javiri came running up and said, Get down there quick, they're destroying everything. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. This is nothing. <laughs> what was this? Wait a minute. Not so long. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but what were you circumambulating? There has to be something there to circumambulate. <laughs> well, also, Devi Dasi is used in Krishna's service. We want to meditate on. Uh, nobody got that. <laughs> he said you meditate on a sense object was used in Krishna's service, and that's, you know. And I said, well, also, Devi Dasi is used in Krishna's service, so should you meditate on this sense object? <laughs> Pretty slow out there tonight. <laughs> So obviously that must mean something different. You don't just like this is used in Krishna's service, but if you just meditate on the book from afar, that is useful. This glass is also used in Krishna's service. You should I meditate on the glass? What if that doesn't have any any value? One meditates on this glass only so long as it's required. It's like if I down all the water, then somebody has to just grab it, run out, put it with water, and come back. So this is the whole purpose of the meditation, just to keep so you don't spill it all over something or crack it. 
You have to meditate on it just so long. It's not that later on, if you sit down, you simply think of that nice glass you took up. Is it? So, what is the meaning of this meditation? Obviously, one meditates on something only so long as he needs to use it in Krishna's service, then he gives it up. Just like Devi Dasi, that's a good example. You have to engage Devi Dasi A and Devi Dasi B. So, as long as you are engaging Devi Dasi A, to a certain extent there's some meditation on Devi Dasi A because you have to figure out, you know, what she can do and what she can't do and this and that. And as soon as she's engaged, you forget about it. Just like the glass. You don't remember the glass, do you? Then why should you forget about Devi Dasi A, B, C, D, ad infinitum? You shouldn't do that. I heard that too, so you shouldn't do that. Generally, one should not heat up anything. That's why when I when I come back from being afar and then somebody runs in the kitchen, I always say, don't heat it up, just bring it up. But they don't listen to me. They always heat it up and they bring it up. Because uh, it's a principal problem. They actually established, told me straight out, don't reheat prashana. I don't mind hot cold, doesn't matter at all to me. If it's already prashana, then you don't have to. If it's not yet offered, then you can reheat it. But once it's offered, you don't reheat it. Somebody asked me that question this morning. Was it you? Or you were in the room. Not of a You don't reheat prashana. No, I'm just telling you what Prabhupada said. If it was me, I'd eat it cold. If you want to heat it up, that's another thing. If you can somehow rationalize that and get away with it, it's all right. I mean, I know it's rotten of me. I realize it's rotten of me to pull out a Prabhupada says and when you know when you when it's cold out. I know that. I don't feel very good about it. But that he did say it. Before and I said he said it before you asked me the question. You got the truth. Well, something hot going in a cold body makes the body hot. Just that. And something cold going in a cold body makes it even colder. In this way, life goes on. Uh-huh. You become absorbed in the present activity. If you're absorbed in the present objects, then you have to forget the previous ones. And then, when you move to a new set of objects, you become absorbed in those and forget about the previous ones. In this way, it's constantly going on. And then you get it to the point where you immediately have no attachment to anything that you just used the second before. Now, if you're going to ask me how can we question, then I'll have to give you the how can we answer. Chant your rounds better and uh, read the books and uh, follow the regular food. And, uh, how can we question? So I'll have the same answer. So if you're going to ask me how can we get break free from previous attachments, after the answer of you become absorbed in the present attachments, as long as they're useful in Krishna's service, I have to go through the uh, chant your rounds better and I mean, it's, of course, it's good to repeat these principles. Everyone should hear the Hare Krishna mantra very nicely after chanting it. He should not carelessly chant his rounds. He should hear his rounds very nicely. All the mantra, if there are things rolling around in the head, kick them out and just hear. Follow the four regulative principles. Uh, <laughs> get up in the morning. Uh, don't blaspheme Vaishnavas. Don't commit the ten offenses against the holy name. <laughs> I mean, it's good to hear these things then. Every day, in fact. Well, if you're at too weak to perform your devotional service, then you can't perform it. 
Okay. If you're too sick, then you have to go lay down. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> now, you can't tell me that the feeling of separation keeps you from performing service. That's Maya. How do you associate with spiritual master in separation? No, no, no. How do you associate with spiritual master in separation? One word answer. Who's going to give it? Instructions. You can't tell me you feel separation from spiritual master, therefore you stop serving because, or you feel incapable of serving because the instruction is serve. Therefore, all strength must be there to do that. Uh huh. Let's sleep a little more. If it's required for practical service, then you should not. I mean, after all, you have to learn to live with the ecstasy. <laughs> Just like Daruka, Daruka, the charioteer of Krishna, he was fanning Krishna with the Chamra fan. Then he started to faint because it was too much ecstasy. He just couldn't handle it. So he's starting to faint. And then he realized, but if I faint, then I can't fan Krishna anymore. So then pulled himself together and kept on fanning Krishna. Yes, that is a principle. And and if one is is fanning Krishna, for instance, and then oh, here I am fainting, and then he thinks, Well that's the ecstasy, let's get into it. <laughs> then the whole the whole purpose not that the whole purpose, but the whole cause of that ecstasy is immediately he's severing the cause of the ecstasy and he's become the enjoyer of the ecstasy. Instead of becoming the cause of the ecstasy, he's now become the enjoyer of it. And therefore he's severing himself or separate, separating himself from the ecstasy because he's now taken up the maya position, which is to be the enjoyer. When previously he took up the Krishna conscious position, which is to be the the performer of service. So one cannot get carried away with these, you know, simultaneously. It's a little, it's a little difficult to understand. So therefore, this way is just way with these feelings. One has to put them aside in order to perform the service. You understand? That's there. Still there. I remember many times when we'd be serving Srila Prabhupada at some, uh, let us say, some kirtan. There's a big kirtan going on in the temple room, uh, in some temple. So we're having a big kirtan, and everybody's jumping up and down in ecstasy. But, you know, I used to carry around Prabhupada's glasses and his book stand and his book and take care of the microphone and you know, make sure his cane was in the right spot and make sure nobody got in the way and nobody bumped into Shura Prabhupada. They used to even bump into him from me. I mean, all these things. You know, I had to do all these things all at once. So, everybody else is having the ecstasy. And in one sense, we'd really be like to get over there and, you know, get in the kirtan too. But on the other sense, our service was a different service. Therefore, we had to forget about that whole ecstasy business. We had to forget completely about it and just concentrate on Shura Prabhupada, what he had to do at this point, what he wanted to do and thus, we could do our service for him properly. So that's the principle. Whatever is required for the service is priority. And all these other feelings, if they get in the way in any way with the service, they're just thrown out. Ruthlessly. Kick them out. Without any sentimentality. As soon as they get in the way of the service, just boom, out the door. That's a very important thing. Question answered? That's not there. No. If you're, if you're utilizing that criticism in service for Krishna, that's all right. 
But if you're criticizing for the sake of causing harm or because of some hatred in the heart or enviousness, there are many possibilities there, but in some way which is not related to Krishna's service, that doesn't advance Krishna's service, then one is guilty of criticism. Especially if you're wrong. If you're wrong, then immediately you're guilty of criticism. Even let's say you criticize somebody with this good feeling in the heart. But if you're wrong, that's also not the right. Not just the feeling there. Not that you, by expert psychological manipulation, learn how to criticize others by having a good feeling. No, more things. I explain these more things. When, when it's not in connection with Krishna's service. We're not talking, we never mention feeling in the heart. Because feeling you can cheat on like anything with feeling. And you won't even know. But rather it's what is in connection to Krishna's service. Space. Okay. If it's right, what you're saying, if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not the problem. No. If you're a rascal and I call you a rascal and you get angry because I called you a rascal, that doesn't mean I committed an offense. And you may even say, you made an offense! That doesn't make it an offense. Just because I declare it an offense doesn't make it an offense. Marko Upadeshihi Prakupaya Nashantya. I remember that verse in at least five years. That, that means if you give a rascal good instruction, he'll simply become angry. If you give a fool, uh, Morka is a fool. Uh, Upadesha, good instruction. Prakopaya and Ashanti is simply going to get angry. Because <laughs> he's a fool. You asked me this morning about heating Prashadama. And then uh, somebody else asked me about heating prasadam up, and I said, you can't heat up prasadam. Then he can't offer to Krishna. <laughs> Uncooked? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Huh? Oh, that's all right. That's okay. As soon as I mention a rule and regulation, there's a billion exceptions and everybody gets all upset. Oh no, oh no, what am I? It's not so big a rule, just a little tiny little rule. <laughs> yes. It's 
called candle time. <laughs> it's not selling books, certainly, because the candle's not a book. You're right. But it's it's certainly devotional service, isn't it? And and when we take the money and uh, use it in Krishna's service, then it is very proper. It's actually maintaining everything. So it's actually it is the basis of the whole uh, preaching effort. So you can't think it's just some mundane activity. No. All right. Hi, <laughs> Disney.